Hey writers, it's Lisa. Today I am going to talk about the objective correlative, what it is and how you can use it in your writing. In his 1919 essay, Hamlet, T.S. Eliot talked about emotion and representing it on the page. He said that emotion shouldn't be represented directly. In other words, simply writing Sam felt dread doesn't really have much of an impact on the reader. It doesn't make them feel anything, it just is received as information. Instead, Eliot suggested that writers should use an objective correlative or something that can be described objectively but that is going to evoke emotion. So to return to Sam who's feeling dread, the challenge would be to come up with uh, something that like a set of objects or a situation or a chain of events that evokes dread in the reader. For example, imagine that Sam is lying on a bed in a dark room and the wind turns into a low moan outside his window. A tree starts tapping, tapping, tapping against the pane of glass. Uh, Sam burrows down under the covers, but then he hears the slow creak of uneven footsteps and maybe a thud. And when he peeks out, you know, he, he realizes it's only the drum of rain against the window. He realizes it's, it's only the sound of a, of a creaking wheelbarrow in the backyard. Those objective events, though, just being described have given the reader a sense of foreboding and a sense of worry about poor Sam. We're feeling what he's feeling because we're observing things. What really works well is to use something that you can use almost symbolically. You can experiment with this by thinking about a, an emotion that you would like to evoke in your reader and then thinking about how you can represent it. So I'm going to give you some examples of emotions and uh, you can play around with how you might represent it. So here are a few ideas. Isolation, fury, grief, even numbness, joy, exhaustion, awe. Choose one, perhaps awe, and think about something you could describe perhaps a sunrise or even a, the close observation of frost on a window. Describe it in a way that evokes that feeling in the reader and you'll have the objective correlative. Your challenge for this week is to spend 10 minutes playing with this objective correlative idea. As I said, choose an emotion, and see if you can externalize it and then think about how that could apply to your work in, in progress. I hope that this very simple explanation of the objective correlative is helpful to you, and I hope that you can find a way to use it in your writing. Thanks for joining writers. Let me know how you felt about this in the comments. I have one of these micro craft lessons on Bookflow every week, so if you want to try it out for free, just go to bookflow.pub. Hope to see you there. Thanks again.